start with is training. I think you receive a lot of no before receiving a yes, and this is everywhere. Now I've seen job as well before we win a project, we receive a lot of no's, so you need to get used to it. I think what helps me, every no you receive is good to ask for feedback why you receive the no, so that you prepare the next time. And you need to learn from the no you receive, and you need to accept that the no is okay until you find a job that suits you. I didn't start applying on my third year, so I did an internship on my second year. I think that helped a lot. I think doing an internship, whoever has got the chance, it just gives you an idea ahead if this is something you want to do before you actually get into the job itself. I think that having like a positive attitude is really, really important. So like, you know, as we're very young ourselves or yourselves, we don't really have much to offer to our employer except hardworking, having like a really positive attitude, can-do attitude, being enthusiastic when picking up your task or your job that your boss has given you. That's really important. Communication, as Priscilla said, but really it is having a good attitude because the only capital that you have as a, as a young employee is being enthusiastic, showing a can-do attitude, getting your hands dirty, showing the willingness to your boss that you're willing to put in the hours or just help volunteer and, and being proactive in like oh can I do this can I help you fix this it's really all about just fixing problems that your boss has to fix and he doesn't have time to do but you're new you're energetic you haven't been through the ground for decades so being able to have that kind of proactiveness is really key I'm sure most of you are aware now that COVID has changed the way of working. Most organisations have moved to a hybrid working model. Some roles are fully remote. I wouldn't say it's changed it in terms of the context of your day to day, but as an individual, you probably have to adapt to the fact that you probably won't be seeing your colleagues physically on a daily basis. Interviews are also taking place a lot virtually. So when I was even interviewing for my role at Uber, none of the interviews were in person. So they were over Zoom, over MS Teams, and the actual interview itself was the same. The question weren't much different but it's just that you're probably doing it in a more comfortable environment. I think as an individual you'd have to adapt in the sense that when you're starting up as a graduate if you're coming into an organization where you're fully in the role you'd have so much probably hands-on support because you're seeing all of your colleagues you're starting as a group you can turn to your managers directly get answers for them straight away when you're in person but whereby roles are more remote or hybrid you may not have that integral support when you're starting the role initially so it's just more on the individual to do a bit more of of their self-development, self-learning on themselves to make sure that they feel comfortable in the role that they're working at. For me personally, I feel like this hybrid working model is positive, I guess, because it just shows that times are changing and traditional roles that back in the day people thought that could only be done in the office, COVID has proven that that's not the case and that you can work remotely, you can work from your home, you can work from another country. And I think that's great for those of us who are quite innovative. So in my role at Uber, it's a fully like hybrid working model. So I can work from where wherever, any country, anywhere. And I think that's great because it gives you the flexibility and autonomy to really own the work that you're doing without feeling strained or constrained to having to go into the office every single day. So yeah, I think COVID has really opened up doors to basically allow us to have that flexibility, which I think is fantastic. don't program a lot within Microsoft Applications, but yeah, you have to have be very good with everything to do with Microsoft Office, and then it's more than the IT itself decides what you do with it. So we do a lot of modeling, so like mesh modeling, and that's quite important. Yeah, so in my sector for accounting, what we normally use is Excel. I'll give you three things in formula that will help you a lot if you don't know it yet. To the table is very helpful when you present things. VLOOKUP is very helpful. And then also when you do certain things, because when you do VLOOKUP, concatenate. I don't know if you hear that, concatenate. But that's how you, you know, create a certain unique key for you to create certain formula. But I would actually add coding. I think maybe 50 years ago coding was not like a thing and uh, even if it's investment banking that you're after or uh, sales and trading or whatever it is or consulting I think coding is really good because coding is a really good way of fixing problems and if you're the only grad in your office that can actually fix problems using coding whether it's VBA or Python or Java then that's like amazing right because you're the go-to guy for like fixing problems. I 
I would say that don't take it personal. I think your experience is valued. You are competing with a lot of people. If we receive 500 CDs, the first half gets thrown away because we don't have time. What has helped me in getting a job, if there was an event like this, I was sitting at the front and I was making eye contact with the guy from Goldman, right? The whole time. Generally, I tried very hard. I tried out of Western Services School. I tried to get a career in banking. I failed. I sat at the front of the class. I was really hard working. I didn't get an interview until my finals. You start hearing all your colleagues, they are like, oh, I got a summer internship at Barclays. So they have half of the experience that you have. The way you have to see it is that you have to tick boxes. Good university, good degrees, relevant experience. And then in competitive industries, what you have to realize is that you're going to be spending a lot of time with the person besides you. The human connection when you are at the interview is so important. And there is actually a way of you to connect with people. In the first job interview that I had, I nailed the interview, but what made me different was that I knew exactly who I was speaking to and how I was going to connect with them. I went through their Facebook. I tried to find points in common. Okay? Yeah, yeah, no. 100% FBI exercise. We all do it, exercise. I think. No, we all do it. You go prepared for an interview. Then I do the interview, I <laughs> tick the boxes, and technical interviews well, and then the last question is, where are your hobbies? And I was just hoping for him to ask me that question. I was hoping, because I was going to tell him techno, because I knew he liked techno. And then he told me, oh, oh, I like techno too. I remember his eyes opened up. And I told him, oh, do you know this DJ and this DJ? And he's like, no, I don't know that DJ or that DJ. I told him, well, if I get to work with you, I can show you some good techno. <laughs> Being positive, like, it really shows if you really want a job. Like, I, there, there are a lot of interviews I went to where, like, I didn't really want the job that much. It was just like a hedge, and it was obvious. When you get up there, I actually have a plan for myself. You know, when they said, like, set your goals, that uh, sounds cliche, but in order for you to find balance in your life, you need to set goals so that you know what is your priority year by year. Through time, you change your mind, but at least you know exactly where you want to be. Like, for this year, I want to focus on my career, so I focus on my career. With your friends will understand, the following year, I want to enjoy life. You enjoy life. So you, you have a goal for myself. So, uh, and that's how I manage my life. Even though my work is very stressful, don't get me wrong, I work extremely hard, long hours, but you need to look after yourself as well and career and personal life you need to find balance and set goals. One thing that I think has always really resonated with me and actually I have seen it manifest in like my practical life experience is that it really is a marathon. I don't know if you guys have heard of the story of the hare and the turtle. It's like this race between a hare and a turtle and the turtle beat the hare because it's slow and steady whereas the hare is very kind of prideful and arrogant and very kind of hasty and quick. In the long run it's all about you competing with yourself and you being successful if you kind of take it slow and steady. It's really boring if it's slow and steady. You will get there, it doesn't really matter where you're from or what you do. Compounded yeah. history will pay its magic.